Good morning. And I, I don't think it's still too late to say Merry Christmas. It, it's only a couple days afterward. I'm still in the Christmas glow. How about you, Sharon? Well, I am. I yeah. am. So are Getting you over a Christmas things? cold. Oh, a Christmas cold. <laughs> are are yes. you wearing new things, too, as a result of that? I am. Just right. just one thing today from our favorite oh. secretary, Miss Janine Haas. Well, that's very nice. Yes. That's very yes. nice. It was, we had a wonderful time. Well, yeah. good. Good. Well, we do welcome you to, uh, to our worship service, and I'm Pastor Jeff Nicholas, and our worship host today is Sharon Zimmerman. Mike Mangan, he's going to sing all kinds of things for us today. A little bit later on, you'll notice our special music. It's called, um, what is that called? The Christmas, the Christmas Hymn, Hymn Sing. Sing. So it will give you a chance to toss out your favorite Christmas uh, hymns, and uh, Mike will lead us in that. Kit will play anything that you call out there. If you call out something that isn't in the hymnal, you know, like, uh, you know, White Christmas or something, Mike says he knows all the Christmas songs, so it, even if it's not in the hymnal, just challenge him. Kit can play anything. Mike can sing anything. We'll have a little <laughs> bit of fun with that later on in the worship service. So we do want to welcome those who are worshiping with us this morning by listening at the, on the radio. Um, you will find the attendance cards in the pew racks in front of you. So we hope that you will fill those in. Let us know that you're here. If you have any uh, prayer concerns or even joys, on the back there's space for you to fill that in, and we would love to hear from you. Um, I would like to remind everybody that the prayers that are lifted up on those cards, we do pray over during our mm -hmm. staff meeting on Tuesday mornings. So we encourage you to do that. And we also welcome all the visitors who may be here. Um, and if you are here, we do have a visitor gift for you in the back of the narthex. And you are welcome to pick up one of those red bags that's there. And hopefully one of us will be able to greet them and um, pass them out personally. Next Sunday, we begin with our Sunday school at 8.30. It'll be from 8.30 to 9.30. And uh, it will go back looking a little bit more like some of our traditional services where th near the beginning we'll have the children's time and, and then dismiss them to go to the Sunday school class. And parents will then pick them up in the fellowship hall following uh, the worship service or following the Sunday school at 9.30. Um, we do have also, through the season, we've had uh, some wonderful uh, worship services and we've been able to put those on DVD. So if you'd like a copy of, there's a variety of things. We have DVD with the red kettle and the cantata on it. We have a DVD of, uh, of the six minutes with uh, Trinity. Uh, Steve Strassman just finished a new version of that one for us. And also with the uh, children's program on there. So Steve has copies of those. And um, if too many of you go to him, he'll know how many more copies he's got to make. So go ahead and please talk with him if you'd like a copy of one of our services through this last season. And then would you like to let them know about this the story Bible study that's going to be resuming absolutely okay on the 10th of January Sunday down at change of heart pastor Jeff has been holding the story Bible study and that will be starting up again on January 10th at 630 downtown um, if you are interested in being a part of that would you please sign on the pink you can count on me slip that's inside your bulletin and we're back into the story series, starting today. Yes. 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 So we're excited about that. Let's join together in our intro. To lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. Please stand. <clears throat> Up your hands, ye mighty gates. Behold, the King of glory waits. The King of kings is drawing near. A Savior of the And now would you join me in the call to worship? Listen, do you hear the sounds of joy? Have you heard the messenger's good news? The, the word, word was with God from the beginning. beginning. In, in Jesus, Jesus, the, the word, word has come, come to dwell among us. us. Break forth into singing, people of God. 
Your comfort and your salvation are at hand. In, in Christ, Christ, we are empowered as God's, God's children. children. We, we are, are gifted, gifted with grace and truth. Sing a new song and marvel at God's ways. Make a joyful noise through all the earth. We, we celebrate, celebrate the true light that, that enlightens us. us. We, we rejoice in the gift of, of new life. life. Let's join together in our opening, uh, opening hymn, We Three Kings. of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse so far, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star Lord. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of Sons of deity now, prayer and praising, voices raising, worshiping God on high. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still. Let's please take a moment and greet one another, passing on the peace of Christ. It is. It's Monday. <laughs> Something like that, I hear. <laughs> Did you We'd really hear that? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you listen to that weather? I haven't heard the news in days. <laughs> I try not to, but some of those things said, oh, it's going to rain. Another one says, oh, we're going to get snow. <laughs> I guess it depends on where we live, huh? It does. It yeah, does. We'll find out tomorrow. Yes. I won't worry about that in my prayers for joys or concerns. No. So some are praying for snow. Some are saying, oh, please let no snow come all winter I know, long. I know. I don't a know. little would be nice. <laughs> Just a little. We do come to that time of prayers, and so it's good to be able to share with one another. And we do have several joys. We are very grateful for the altar flowers that are given by the Hall family in honor of Stephanie and Keeley's birthdays. And Rosemary Coles, once again, has given to the radio broadcast in memory of Morris. We do have some uh, concerns we'd like to have remembered in prayer. We want to continue our prayers for Clarence uh, Stungy. Um, Chris uh, Gallenbeck, uh, Carrie Vinovich has been 
um, reminding us of uh, his health. Well, he did pass away this uh, last weekend, so we do want to uh, lift up uh, his family and keep all them in prayers as they uh, prepare to remember him and celebrate his life. And Fran Younger, who is with us this morning, is going to be in surgery tomorrow morning in Madison for her wrist. And then we have uh, uh, prayers. Uh, John Weinberger had some surgery this past weekend. And Larry Steiner will be having some after the first of the year, so I want to remember him also. And then I did turn on a little bit of news last night. I was just a little bit curious. I'd been so far out of it, I wanted to make sure, you know, we still have something happening here that maybe Santa Claus got back to the North Pole or something. But um, as I was turning it on and looking around the country as far as what was happening, boy, over Christmas, what a, what a mess in a lot of places. You go down south and they had these torrential rains and there was flooding all over. You look out west and there were wildfires going like crazy. There were some other storms in the south with tornadoes just going on. We've been here in this very mild weather and you sit back and think, oh, it's all nice all over the place. Well, it's been a mess in the rest of the country. And so it would be a good time to uh, just remember those that were in many more difficult weather situations than what we were uh, here mm -hmm. in our area. Right. We have been very blessed. Yeah, we have been blessed. Let's join together for a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy God, we do give you thanks. As we have come together to worship you throughout the season of Advent and and now that Christmas season, as we have come to search for and remember the peace that we can find by returning to that manger and remembering that the Christ child was born so many years ago, but also born even to this day into our lives and into our hearts and into our souls. We give you thanks for the living grace of our Savior, Christ the Lord who can continue to touch our hearts and our lives even this day and will continue to do so till the ends of time. We give you thanks that in the middle of confusion in Bedlam as we had been talking about that we're able to find your peace and your presence, your love and your joy and your grace. Sometimes it doesn't seem to make sense. But in our hearts, as we turn to you in our faith, we're able to seek and find all of these gifts that you've given to us. And we're so thankful. As we look around in what's happening throughout the country and in different places, not all, again, had that peaceful Christmas time. There are those who are underwater, those who had to run from the fires that were coming their direction, those that had to hide from the tornadoes that came their way. We ask that you will be with them as they put things back together again and rebuild, come out of their hiding places and through the devastation find ways to start again. Give them that peace of your presence. Continue to watch over them. We give you thanks as we remember special persons in our, in our lives and in our hearts, as we remember uh, Maurice, and as we honor Stephanie and Keeley. We lift those up in prayer who need that touch of your spirit for healing and wholeness. We pray that you continue to watch over John and Larry and Fran, as they're in times of surgery and recovery. Be with the family of, of Chris as they remember his life and say their goodbyes. Be with the family of Clarence as they surround him with their love and their grace during this time. Continue, O oh God, to watch over us as we conclude this year and as we begin the next year remembering the blessings that we have received not forgetting the struggles that we've been through but praising you for the times that we've walked through the fires or the valleys 
and still given us a new day to look forward to. We ask your blessings in the coming year as you watch over us, as we have more opportunities to share our faith in you, the light of Christ shining from our hearts into the hearts and souls of, of one another. Together as the body of Christ, we remember and pray as Jesus once taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will have that time now of uh, some special music, so you call out what you want to sing. It's by faith. We know this. Kit can play anything. Isn't that great? And Mike can sing anything, so uh, you can turn on your microphone. I'm going to turn mine off. I don't guarantee uh, to sing everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll let, let the two of them lead us. And so go ahead and feel free. Number 227. All right. Let's do two verses. Once in royal David city, on a lowly cattle shed. Oh, no. 
240. And let's sing two verses of Heart the Herald Angels Sing. You made it easy on him. I was, I was expecting you to give him a hard one here and there, but maybe afterward you can think of something hard. We'll have him do an extra postlude or something. We do come to the time of our offerings and uh, very grateful throughout our Christmas season. We had our ornament tree in the back where uh, many persons remembered loved ones and uh, uh, family members and friends. We do invite you, if you'd like to, to uh, pick up those ornaments after worship. You're welcome to take those home and add those to your ornaments at home for your trees. We did raise about $1,000 uh, uh, of uh, money that will go to our worldwide mission program. So thank you very much for your wonderful offerings uh, this year.
We thank you, Lord, for the gifts you have blessed us with, so many that we just can't name them all. As we enjoy continued Christmas celebrations, remind us of those most important gifts that you have given us. Peace, joy, hope, love, and your Son, the Christ. In our gratitude, we give back to you, Lord, what we can. Bless these gifts that we have given to you, Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a moment, please, if you would. Yeah, come on up. It'll be all right. Oh. If someone's shy, you can come with them. That's okay. How come you're shy? I mean, you get to come up and sit by Grandpa. You shouldn't be shy about that. You don't even have to go alone. How are you? Did you guys get Christmas presents? Yeah. Oh, well, good. I, I handed out something a little bit. These were special things. These were like, um, you can put these on your wrist. Do you want one of those? Yeah. These are, it's, it's a faith work. It's kind of an inspirational thing to put on your wrist. And what I reminded us, you put those on and remind us of our, of our faith in God. Nice and simple, right? You can have that. Now, now I'm going to just put my lid back on. I'm having some struggles with that lid. What's going on? Oh, how come I can't put my lid on? I want it to go on. What's going on? Am I doing it the right way? No? How would you put the lid on? How would you put it on? Turn it the other way. It the other way. Show me. And that goes on? Wait a minute. I'm left-handed. I want to turn it this way. But I want the lid to go on. What are you talking about? My lid didn't stay on. What's the matter? i got to turn it that way. I don't want to turn it that way. I'm left-handed. I like to turn it this way. i got to turn it that way. Are you sure? I turn it that way, but I'm left-handed and I want to turn the lid on. What do you mean? I got to go that way? All right, so I have to go this way for it on. This way's off, and this is on. But I want to turn it left-handed because I'm left-handed. Oh, no. All right, I use my right hand and turn it left-handed. And the lid go on, on, on. It's not going on. What if I try harder? Will it go on if I try harder? No? no. So if I keep turning it the wrong way, it's not going to go on? No. i got to do this? Oh, that's hard. I'm, I'm right-handed. I'm not right-handed. I don't want to turn it that way. I want to turn it this way. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of people in our story today. In the Old Testament, in the book of Judges, the people kept saying to God, they wanted to do the right thing. They wanted blessings and blessings and blessings, but they kept doing it the wrong way. It's kind of like turning the lid on left-handed. It's not going to work, is it? You know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again the wrong way, it's still not going to help you get to the right way, is it? It took God's people at least more than six times during that whole book of Judges before they figured out, oh, if I keep going the wrong way, that's not going to be very good. It won't work. Maybe I better turn it around and do it the right way, huh? If we do it the right way, then things will work like we want it to, won't it? That's what God was teaching the people then, and I think we can even learn something about that now. If we follow God's way, which is a way of love, then we'll have some good things happen. If we follow other ways that seem to get us in trouble, they'll continue to get us in trouble. Who likes trouble? 
Let me ask, any of you like to be in trouble out there? Who likes to not be in trouble? All right. Well, that means there's ways to do that so we don't get into trouble. Just like turning the lid on. If I do it the right way, it'll go on. If I do it the wrong way, no matter how hard I want it, it won't go on, will it? I've got to do it the right way. Let's say a prayer. God, we are your children, and we don't want to be in trouble. But sometimes we keep doing the wrong thing again and again and again, hoping we won't get in trouble. But it doesn't work out that way. Show us the right way, O oh God, so that we keep ourselves out of trouble and we keep ourselves wrapped up in your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. You helped me to turn the lid the right way. That was great. Let's join together in our hymn, the first one ever. You can remain seated. You'll find today's scripture lesson on the back of your bulletin, and the first coming from Judges, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And if you can get past all of these names and places, there's a really good message here. Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim and the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor, and I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors, to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory over him. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied, I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture. 
for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. And then from Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, Soon afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. The word of God for the people of God. As we look through our scriptures, sometimes it's interesting to see it in a variety of different ways. This uh, passage today is uh, part of the book of Judges. I want to give you just a little bit of an overall view of Judges. Let's take a look at it in a little bit different format and, and see a little bit of the story of Judges. After Joshua died, the Israelites began to worship other gods. Because of this, God caused them to lose their battles and become slaves of other nations. Each time this happened, God would raise up one man or woman called a judge to help the Israelites escape. But after each escape, Israel would go back to their old ways, not living how God had told them to live. Then they would lose another battle and fall back into slavery. This cycle happened over and over again. At one point, the Israelites were enslaved in a country called Midian. They cried out to God for rescue, and God sent an angel to a man named Gideon to help them. God told Gideon the only way to beat the Midianites was to send only a small number of soldiers, just 300. So, in the middle of the night, the 300 soldiers came to the edge of the Midianite camp, blew their trumpets all at once, and smashed jars with torches in them. The incredible sight and sound this made confused and terrified the Midianites so much they began to kill one another. Gideon and the Israelites chased the remaining Midianites and killed them all. After this battle, Israel enjoyed 40 years of peace. But when Gideon died, the Israelites went back to their old ways, worshiping other gods. So they were captured by the Philistines. God sent another judge named Samson. Samson had long hair and was incredibly strong. At one point, he actually killed a wild lion with his bare hands, tearing it to pieces. The Philistine leaders were afraid of Samson because of his incredible strength. So they came up with a plan. They knew Samson had fallen in love with a woman named Delilah. So they paid her to find out the secret behind his superhuman strength. After much convincing, Samson revealed that his long hair made him strong. Soon after, while Samson was sleeping, Delilah led the leaders into his room and they cut off his hair. With his strength gone, the Philistines gouged his eyes out and threw him in prison. While there, his hair grew back and his strength began to return. One day, while the Philistines were partying, they took Samson out of prison, forcing him to perform in front of them in their palace. While standing between two pillars, Samson prayed that God would give him strength. Then, he placed his hands on the pillars and shook them until the roof of the palace completely caved in, killing all the Philistines as well as himself. After Samson's death, the Israelites' pattern of disobedience continued, and God would need to look outside of Israel for someone who would follow God's ways. That's about the quickest reading of Judges I think you're ever going to have. <laughs> it's a little different way to look at it, isn't it? I think that, that's part of the, the story in the youth programming um, study, that the youth are able to see those different videos each week and, and follow along as they go through the story itself. And uh, just a fun way to watch it and, and see the story coming. You know, if you think of the idea of Judges, you know, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? If you just hear the word judge... You like that word? 
Sometimes people don't like the word. You, you think judge. It's like, oh no, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? What am I going to get caught doing? You ever get to that point where at some point in your life there's, there's some particular times you can, you can know of and, you, and you're so afraid you're going to get caught? Or a time when you've been caught and, and you have to admit what you've done? Those are, those are some rougher times. Whether you did something literally wrong or even by accident, you know, you hit that baseball, it went through that window, it's like, ooh, I think it must have been the neighbor kid. It wasn't me out there hitting that ball. Oh, maybe it was me. I don't, I don't know. But we don't like to get caught. We don't, like, we don't like judges coming in there. But we need to have those judges that are in there. As we're reading through these scriptures, we had uh, the last of the stories that we read were out of the book of Joshua. Joshua talks about all the things that the Israelites did right. They were, they were doing these wonderful feats that, um, and defeating all their enemies. There's only one time in Joshua when they didn't do uh, what was right. And that was someone in the battle took some of the plunder of some of the war and, and they weren't supposed to keep it for themselves, but they did. And then the next battle they lost. And then Joshua found that out and they kind of took care of that person that didn't obey and do what God commanded. But then Joshua sat down, it said, and he, he, he sat down everybody, all the men, all the women, all the children, and all those who were foreigners that were living among them, sat them down and went through the entire law from the beginning all the way through the end and made sure that every one of them knew the law of God. And then they continued to prosper uh, in the land. Joshua showed everything that they did right. And then you get to Judges. And then it seems like it's everything that Israel did wrong. And they kept doing the same things over and over again that kept getting them into trouble. And they wouldn't learn that. They went through, in, in Judges, you can see six different Judges at least that they go through. They had this habit of sinning, and then they would suffer the consequences, and then they would repent and then God would send a judge to deliver them out of that. And they'd have some time of peace when the judges came. And when that particular judge died, they would sin. They would be oppressed. They would repent. And then they would be delivered because God would send another judge for them. And then that judge died. And then they, you get the picture, right? They sinned. They did this. Repent. And then God sent another judge. It is interesting looking through that. There were two things that, um, that happened throughout this. The first one is they failed to put God first in their lives. They kept forgetting the, to remember God. When all the things were going so well for them, they wouldn't remember to thank God for all the blessings they'd received. They, they refused to put God first. And the second thing they did is they forgot to tell their children about God. Every time there was a generation where the children didn't know God, they'd forget about God, they'd start worshiping all the, the pagan gods, and they'd do everything that everybody else in the culture did. It was so tempting to just want to conform with the culture and do everything that was done by everybody else. Why wouldn't you want to do it? You don't want to stand out and look odd or not normal and have everyone make fun of you, so you just kind of do what everybody else does. They refused to tell their children and didn't teach who God was and what God was about. Joshua sat down with everyone, the men, the women, the children, the foreigners, and told them what God's law was. In Judges, they kept forgetting to do that. So you'd go for a generation, you'd have 40 good years while there's a, a judge that's there, they die, and, and then people get away from it, they forget about God, they have 40 bad years, and then they have 40 good years, and then 40 bad years, and it goes back and forth and back and forth all the time. No, I don't always get it. I mean, I eat the same food every day. I get the same amount of exercise every day. I pray for the same thing every day. And every morning I get up, I step on the scale, and I haven't lost anything. And I think, why hasn't God answered my prayer? Hmm. So I go to the doctor, and she says, eat more fruit, more vegetables, more fiber, protein, and exercise. All right, so I listen. I have apple peach, blueberry, pies, <laughs> carrot, you know, cakes, oatmeal, cookies, and two more protein shakes. It takes me at least three more trips to the kitchen, and I still don't get good results. What in the world am I doing wrong? I just don't get it. 
or, or do I? You know, there's these cycles that we have. In the judges, we see the sin cycle. And the sin cycle is what I just said. They go ahead and they sin, they have the consequences, they repent, and then God delivers them. And they just kept repeating it over and over again. You know that definition of insanity is to keep doing the same things and expect different results? You know, why do I step on the scales after I have my fruit pies and oatmeal cookies and carrot cakes? I shouldn't even step on it. I know, even if it was three more trips to the kitchen and that much more exercise, it's not going to change the results anything or anything positive that I'd want to have, but it's the same cycle. You know, we can have, there, there's lots of nice cycles. You can have bicycles and tricycles and you can have life cycles. You can have motorcycles. You have your everyday cycles. Some of those things are so routine. We like the everyday. There's, there's 12 months of the year. There's 365 days or six this year. In the year, there's 60 seconds in every minute. There's success fail cycles and there's also failure cycles. And in Judges, we hear about the sin cycle. We have the, the Moabites who came in and then oppressed Israel for 18 years. We have the Canaanites who oppressed them for 20 years. And, and so when you have, you know, one, you have to have the king or the judge Deborah. For another, you have the king Gideon. Maybe for the Midianites, there was the king Ehud. For the Amorites, there was the king Samson. For the Termites, there's the king Orkin. Just seeing if you're awake here. Termites, Orkin, just checking you out here. The Israelites, they refused to give up their evil ways. One of the judges that came in was Deborah. If you want to read an exciting book, I mean, read Judges. It has some very interesting stories. And the ones that you remember, and maybe ones that you've kind of heard about but you forget and you don't know where to look, those are the ones that are in Judges at times. You've got Deborah coming in there, and, and again, there's this cycle of social chaos, and, and uh, she was ready, she told the the leader, the commander of the armies to go in there and, and they would win, they would defeat the enemy of Sisera and, and the king said, or the commander of the army said, well I'm not going to go without you. Well that was kind of his mistake. And then she said, well you're not going to get the glory then. Sisera is going to be delivered in the hands of a woman. Sisera ended up with a splitting headache. If you read the story, and you can read it in the story. If you get that book, sometimes it leaves out all those boring parts in the middle of it where they're naming a bunch of names and going into details you don't want to hear about. It kind of condenses it a little bit. You get right to the core of the story. Sisera ended up going and um, uh, laying down for sl to sleep in the, the tent of a, of a nice young woman, and, and she took a tent peg and kind of put it through his temple. And uh, so he had a splitting headache, but uh, he didn't make it in the end. Very interesting story. But then they had 40 years of peace because Sisera was defeated. And they didn't tell, they didn't put God first, and they didn't tell their children about it. So things went from good to bad to worse, to worse again, until they repented and said, God, please send another judge. So then we have Gideon who comes in. And the angel goes to Gideon and says, you know, um, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And Gideon says, pardon me, me, a mighty warrior? Do you know who you're talking to, angel? The angel says, yes, you're God's servant. You are the one that has the strength to save Israel. And Gideon says, um, pardon me, Lord, I'm, I'm the weakling. I mean, all my brothers, they're all stronger. And our whole tribe, we're the weakest among everyone. What in the world are you coming to me for? We're, we're the weak ones. And the angel says, no, you're the one that has the strength that's going to lead and defeat your enemies. And so Gideon got a little bit smart there for a moment. He said, all right, well, then give me a sign. And so it goes through this where he prepares the food. He puts it on a rock and he says, okay, Lord, if you want it, take the food. So the fire comes and consumes all the food. So Gideon's, oh, now God wants this weakling to go defeat the enemy. So he says, well, God, you know, don't, don't be upset with me, but... Let me test you one more time. He went up to his threshing floor and, and he put out this, uh, this fleece of wool. And he said, Lord, if you want me to do this and, and it's really true that I'm the strong one, then make this fleece all wet with morning dew, but all the ground around it, let it be dry. And then I'll believe you, Lord. So the next morning he comes in and wrings out that fleece and gets a whole bunch of water out of it and the ground around is just perfectly dry. 
So Gideon's thinking, all right, well, I don't know about that. Let me try again, Lord. Don't, don't be mad at me, but let me try this again. I just want to make sure that you really think that I'm the strong one here. This time, I want the fleece to be dry and the ground all around it wet with dew. So he gets up the next morning and the ground all around is wet with dew and he goes, ah, I know the fleece is going to be wet too. It's perfectly dry. So he knows he has to go into battle. So he gathers together 32,000 Israelites and he's ready to go to battle and the Lord says, no, 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 no. Then you'll think it's your own strength. He says, tell everyone who's afraid just to walk away. So he tells the 32,000, if you have any fear at all, then just leave. 22,000 left. He has 10,000 troops left. And he's going against many thousand more than what he has. But the Lord says, no, 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 you're still going to look too strong. Take them all down and ask them to get a drink of water. So he took them down by the water and uh, uh, you know, some, of the, some of them drank some way and others scooped it up and they lapped it up like dogs, you know, just sticking out their tongue and lapping up the water. There are about 300 of those guys. And the Lord says, I want the 300 dog lappers. That's who's going to defeat the enemy. And that's when uh, Gideon then knew it was not at all going to be by his strength or the strength of the armies. It was only going to be a deliverance by God's hand. And then God had Gideon and, and the people all surround the camp where, where their enemies were and and at a certain point in time, they all started to blast the trumpets. They smashed the jars, and they, they shouted out uh, a sword for Gideon and or for the Lord and for Gideon. And the camp got all confused. It woke them up in the middle of the night, and they thought they were being attacked. They all got up with their swords and started to attack back. Only there were no people from Israel in there. It was all among themselves, and they all killed each other. And so the Lord defeated the enemies of Israel with 300 persons. Now after you go through story after story, wouldn't you think they'd get it? But then they forgot about God again and didn't put God first. And they didn't tell their children about God. So their children didn't know who God was. <clears throat> and the children, of course, wanted to conform to the culture around them. And so they went back and they started to sin again. And then they were oppressed and then someone might have mentioned God, and so they said, Oh God, if you're really alive and there and you care about us, deliver us. So God sends Samson in there. That one gets interesting too. I mean, these are the good stories that are in there, and you just have to read through those. Samson goes in, and you know, he's the one that puts out the riddles there, and, and the first woman that he married, you know, she wanted to know the, the answer to the riddle, and then she told all the people so they didn't get what they wanted, and Samson got mad, and so then he kills a few people, then they got mad, and they went back after Samson, and so then he tied 300 fox together, tail to tail, put a torch on their tail, sent them through the field where they burned all their food. Then they got mad, they went back after Samson, then he went back after them, back and forth and back and forth. And finally he meets, meets another woman and, and he really kind of likes her. And, and then four times, you know, she tests him, to, what's your strength, what's your strength? And this guy, he just gives right in again, tells her the source of his strength, gets his hair cut off and he's weak until the end again where they're mocking him. And he stands between those pillars and pulls down the pillars and he, he just brings down the house not in such a good way for him or all those who happen to be in it. And the cycle just continues again and again and again. Sin and oppression and repentance and deliverance. One of the things that, um, you know, how do, we, how do we get to that point where, you know, we, with Joshua, they won the land of promise, but they lost the war of complacency. Somehow, when the judges were there, they found ways to keep walking forward towards God's will. It might have been that they tested God, they, they kind of doubted, they argued with God, but even though they did, when the judges were there, they continued to go forward in God's will. They forgot to tell the children, they forgot to inform people how to put God first, but somehow, during the time of the judges, they would move forward to God's will. And after they'd forget, they'd lose all the ground that they'd gained. Sometimes that happens in our lives, doesn't it? Those cycles. We get all charged up and we're ready to go for God and, and walk forward and, and be obedient and then we find ourselves backing off again. And then we get there again, back and forth it goes. 
somehow, as we read through the stories, we're encouraged to press through our fears. The odds may seem against us, but we're encouraged by God to press on, to remember, to put God first in our lives. And as we remember that, to be sure to tell our children the two things they missed are things that we can know so we don't have to repeat the cycles again and again and again. Putting God first in our lives and making sure our children understand the story. It breaks the cycle of sin. And through that power of Christ, we're given the strength to do this. Amen. Let's join together in our closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Please stand. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger a humble Christ was born. And God sent all salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.